if I could give some advice to anybody considering, single guys included, do it. Just go. Yeah, it sucks you might have to do it alone. It sucks it's $100. It sucks it might be a long drive. But all those things combined, if you really want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. As soon as you realize you're the only person in your own way, it's easier to get out of your own way. Hey everybody, it's Tron Unicorn. I am in a very cute little outfit that keeps having a nip slip. Uh, so I have to be careful. I'll show you the, the bottom part. Just strangling my ass right now, just so you know. Um, that's the bottom part. And then I'll be taking some of this off for my OnlyFans version. So anyways, I, um, I wanted to talk to you about an important time in my life and how I got there because I think a lot of people on this channel that watch me are curious swingers and think maybe one day they could have some of these experiences. Like even if you're middle-aged, late in life, it's not too late. You can still try, right? Like like, what's the harm in like going and having an experience and, and at least observing, even if you don't get your own threesome, there's nothing wrong with going and watching people have threesomes at sex clubs. Um, my two cents. So <laughs> anyways, I wanted to talk about how I did it, how I got there because it was not easy. It took many years for me to yearn for the life of a threesome. And, um, I, I had boyfriends when I was younger and we would go online and download apps and upload photos and, and send messages and things. And we never, ever got a unicorn. We never, ever considered a couple. It was always just a unicorn at first. Um, I don't know why, actually, but we just thought that was where we were starting. But um, it, it never materialized, even though we wanted it to. I had a close call when I was younger, or what I thought was a close call with a threesome that I thought I chickened out of, which I just technically got a little too high on weed and got a little weird. <laughs> So anyways, I wanted to talk about, you know, then I was in my 30s and I still hadn't had my first threesome and I would go on dates with people I met on dating apps because I was just looking for a boyfriend at that time and I would make sure that they were on the same page about like wanting threesomes and we would always talk about it and I, if they had a threesome, I'd love to hear their story about it. Um, and I found that only a few of them ever even had one and if they did, they weren't like the most memorable stories. So, um, anyways, I ended up to a point in my life where I realized that I didn't have to wait for a guy to be with me to have a threesome. I didn't have to be in a relationship with a man to feel the safety of that while we look for a third. I could be the third. And so I decided after a bit of internal deliberation did I want the experience bad enough to do it alone? And for a few years, the answer was no. And then there was a point when I was 34 years old where I looked around and I said, I am the only one holding myself back. I am the only one in my way. It's right there. What the fuck are you waiting for? And I use that mentality for a few, for a few uh, areas in my life. One of them is, is self-love, frankly, and accepting your body the way it is. So um, that was one of the most freeing things that happened to me in my 30s also, which I do hear happens to women. But like if they could fucking like, you know, I don't know, get a vaccine so that people get this earlier, <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> Anyways, um... I remember being a bit upset that I had to do it alone. I wasn't happy about the fact that I was doing it as a single unicorn. I wanted to do it as a couple, but I decided, I decided I wanted the experience bad enough to do it alone. And what I learned from doing this after kind of making that hard le like leap, frankly, walking into a sex club sober, by the way, I didn't uh, drink or anything. Um, I walked in there and I had sex with a woman for the first time. I had a threesome. I had, I've never looked back. 
I still go to Oasis. I never looked back. My life has changed forever. I have met the most amazing people. I have met the most amazing and accepting uh, community of swingers that even at our age, it's so easy to make friends because everybody in the swinging community is looking to hook up basically. And so everybody's really approachable. <laughs> It's true. Everybody's more friendly because we're all looking. We're open. Our body language is open for the most part um, because we're always interested in like who's the next, you know, swinger adventure we're going to share, right? Something with. So um, I just, I, I, I've never looked back. And if I could give some advice to anybody considering, single guys included, do it. Just go. Yeah, it sucks. You might have to do it alone. It sucks it's $100. It sucks it might be a long drive. But all those things combined, if you really want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. And if so sometimes you have to realize that as soon as you realize you're the only person in your own way, it's easier to get out of your own way. And that is when you decide, are you going to go into 2022 um, afraid of the same things that you were afraid of in 2021? So... So that's my um, experience on that. Uh, so anyways, I think I better sign off of YouTube because it's time for this to come up and time to talk with my OnlyFans about um, actually what I'm doing tonight, which is a crazy last minute organized uh, potential group thing. So um, I want to go into detail about that. So you're going to have to come to my OnlyFans. I also have a new announcement coming about my website that I'm building. Um, it's really exciting. So, uh, so stay tuned, but come to my OnlyFans if you want to have an extended after dark period with, with me and, uh, and get more intimate.